The DRZ400, best bike to this day in my opinion, as far as hitting it right in the middle of true dual sports. See, I came back from a 300 mile ride with my KLX250 around Colorado. So before we continue on this video, keep in mind I am 220 pounds without gear and I also ride in elevations above 10,000 feet. So this might apply to some of you westerners if you're in a similar situation. See, the comfort of a KLX250 is nice, but a seat concept can be added on a DRZ400. The power, of course, is much better on the DRZ400 versus the KLX250. And although it is 5 gears versus 6 gears on the KLX250, I prefer the power of the DRZ400 on highway roads and our steep terrain. I'm not sure what this is. So, coming back from this trip got me thinking if I should revamp my DRZ400 and do a true comparison video on the KLX250 and DRZ400. But this video is not really about that. It's more for who is this bike really designed for? 300 miles on a KLX250 is quite a lot for a small adventure, but it gives me plenty of opinions aside. See, although 5 gears, I think the DRZ400 would have been the better choice here. I believe the DRZ400 has light adventure riding in mind, especially for 70-30 dirt riders, or a true 50-50 as long as speeds don't exceed 60 miles an hour for long. Sure, you can gear the DRZ400 high, but that low gearing is definitely nice and probably needed for technical rides. So the DRZ400 is great for riders who still want to have technicality in their venue. Yet, the power of hitting 60 miles an hour with ease, but some quick reserve for 75 mile an hour runs on the highway. The KLX250 couldn't even barely touch 70 mile an hour at 1350 gearing and that should have been plenty of torque for the bike but I guess not for my weight and elevation changes. Don't get me wrong, it hit 70 miles an hour, but it took quite some time and it still had power to give. The RPMs were still hovering around, I will say maybe 8,000, 7,000 or so. So it still had a little bit of speed in it. So we all want to go on light adventure rides, find awesome scenery, trails, towns and explore the unknown, but finding the perfect bike will be impossible. But all I can do is give my opinion as a light ADV rider myself. So the question, who is this DRZ400 designed for? Well, without a doubt, this DRZ400 can handle gnarly tough trails, it's reliable, easy to work on and parts are dirt cheap. These bikes can go... 30k, 40k on a single top and if maintained right. I personally think this bike is perfect for someone who wants to explore miles of dirt roads and do minimal to average street hops just to get to their destinations. Someone looking for good power but not over the top scary power. Do I prefer this DRZ over the KLX 250 when it comes to long distance exploring? Overall, yes I do. The DRZ 400E feels more dirt bikey or off-roading and has tons of power to give, easy to work on on your own and has enough power to haul gear if needed. This bike is meant for back road travelers who also have short pavement rides in mind with high flowing traffic and don't want to get eaten up by cars on one way roads. Other than that, that is my simple review and opinion of a DRZ400 on how it compares to my world. 
Hope you guys like this video and if you do, subscribe and hit that bell button.